we... Okay. Let's get started here this morning. Would you bow with me as we pray? Dear God, our Father, we are so grateful for the quiet time we have now to come together and study from your word, and we pray that you will help us to understand it well and to understand your plan and the blessings that you give us through your Son, Jesus. We pray, Father, that you help our faith and encourage us, help us to live as your people always. We ask, Father, you forgive our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. So here we are about to get into chapter 4. We've got a little more to do in chapter 3. But I just want to ask, what are you thinking so far of Romans? Like, what, what, what's like some of your impressions of the, the book of Romans? Joe? We're, we're educating, we're, you know, we can do uh, school and everything. And just people that are reading this back in that time, this is extremely complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't know how to get through to that. Okay. In, in, right, yeah. yeah. Joe's saying, like, you know, hey, we, you know, we're kind of educated people and we kind of struggle our way through Romans. How did these people long ago, how did they work their way through Romans and understand? What do you think about that? I think they were living it. Huh? I think they were living it. Well, I mean, we have to be educated if we don't understand what they were Yeah, doing. yeah. Right? But they were in the midst of it. Yeah. And I've, I've kind of thought that way too. I'm not saying it's easy because it's not. Romans is hard. But I think we spend half of our time just trying to understand those to whom it was written to. And, and we're trying to understand things that they already knew. And, and that's part of our struggle. We, spend a lot of, we have spent a lot of time up to this point just trying to understand who is it to and why was this being said to them. And I think some of that they already got. I mean, a lot of the analogies and stuff we've talked about, they already understood those. They made easy sense to them. I'm not saying that Romans is easy, even for them. And I'm not saying it's easy for us. Maybe it is for you, not for me. It, it, it's tough to get through to me. When we say it was written to them, we need to also have the mind that's written to us. Absolutely. The blessings of salvation through faith that Paul was trying to get those Jewish Christians to understand, and the Gentile Christians too, is the same message for us. For us to get it, we have to kind of transpose ourselves a little bit to where they were at that time. But the message is just as strong and just as powerful to us. And I hope that we, we get that as, as we go through. You know, these first 11 chapters or so to me are the really really tough ones to kind of get that in place and then it's, it's more of doctrinal kind of issues you get to chapter 12 and following and we get a little bit more into application of some things that were said and it, it very often preaching we go to the book of romans we go to chapter six you know and maybe some chapter one but it's chapter 12 and beyond that usually we go to to touch make a touch point of something that we make application to. That's the application points. We don't spend as much time in these first 11 chapters, and that's why it's tough for us now. Yeah. I uh, used to take it night school when I was in the military, and I wanted to study the history mm -hmm. of Rome. And I think it really helps you when you go through the book of Romans to know that That, that meant something to have Roman citizenship. It did. But narrowing our focus here to the Jews and the Gentile Christians that, that Paul is writing to, what are we going to be able to take away from that? Chapters 1 through 3 I've not found to be all that difficult. Chapter 4 is starting to beat me up just a little bit. 
you know, trying to get it to a, in, in a position where, oh, we get what he's saying here. You know, that's, that is the part of the challenge. But, you know, looking at chapters 1, 2, and 3, you know, okay, I think we're getting a point here, you know, of, of what Paul is trying to help these Christians understand, particularly when we talked Wednesday night in the last part of chapter 3, you know, the blessings and the benefits in Christ. I mean, this was a beautiful section when we get to this part. You know, it was like he said to the Gentiles, you know, you have messed up, you have sinned so, so much, inexcusable. Chapter 2 to the Jews, you have sinned so much, you have no excuse. You were given the word of God. You should know better. And so it would kind of leave you thinking like, man, what hope do we have? In chapter 3, verse 24 in the following, what God has given Jew and Gentile. Christ, hope through Christ, his blood. You know, he is the propitiation for our sins. We talked about Wednesday night. It, it was his, he satisfied God in view of our sins. That is our hope. So in the last part of chapter three, we take up here at verse 27, and we just touched on it a little bit. And there was some, a, a good point or two made, but our time was just gone. And I want to look at this again here quickly. Verse 27 of chapter 3. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No. But by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, the Gentiles also, seeing there is one God who would justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. In view of what was said in the previous verses here about what is offered in Christ, and then what we just read, in what may we boast? In what may we boast? What would you say? God's given us a, a chance of salvation. Yes. Our hope of salvation, we boast in anything. It is a, in a hope of salvation that is in Christ, the one that he sent uh, to save us. And what would the Jews boast? Their lineage, being a Jew. And, and their traditions? Their traditions. Everything about being a Jew. You know, their, their, their lineage in, in Abraham, this is what they would boast in. And, and now, you know, Paul is trying to, try, trying to say, it's like, you know, is he a God of the Jews only? Or is he a God of the Gentiles only? You know, yes, it is Jews and it is Gentiles. Of the circumcised and of the uncircumcised, uh, the circumcised of faith, the uncircumcised of faith. And you cannot help but just, just think about some of those, those Jews who are hearing this, and they're trying to understand, so, so what, what benefit is it being circumcised? What, what benefit is it in, in being a, a Jew? Do we make void the law through faith? Interesting question here. I mean that the Jews had to have been wondering about. So, and we talked about this on Wednesday. It's like, so what benefit is there being a Jew? Or what benefit was the law? Some had to be asking, why did we even have the law if even now the Jew Gentiles are saved? I mean, can't you imagine that, that being the thought process on that? And, and, and let me turn that around as a question even. It's like, so then what benefit was the law? It's a fair question. It had to have been asked. So what benefit is the law? I'm asking you. It shows that no uh, individual human could keep the law. It had to be God's son. Well, the law pointed to God's son. It was the law that helped to establish right and wrong, helped to establish what was sin. But can't you imagine how some would have wondered, well, what benefit has there even been to be a Jew or to have the law? Paul anticipated that very question when he wrote to the Galatians in chapter 3. He said, why, why then was the law given to faith? What purpose? And he goes on to answer that. Uh, but he said, the law was put in place to bring people to Christ. 
Exactly. David's reminding us about Galatians chapter 3, where that very question was asked in verse 19. You know, rhetorically, Paul is saying, so then what purpose is the law? And then he goes on to answer that question, remember? You know, that it was the law who was, was the, the tutor, the schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, he said. Remember that? I mean, that, that there's purpose to the law, you know, that we might be justified by faith through Christ. You know, and he goes on to say in Galatians 3, verse 26, For you are all sons of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. All are one in Christ. And so Paul is not in Romans saying, you know, that law didn't really mean anything. No, that's not what he's saying. He's not saying that at all. And, and to those Jews who were kind of wondering and questioning some things about that, he doesn't say there was no value to the law. He's going to say opposite of that. But now the point that he's trying to make and emphasize is that Jew or Gentile, through faith, we are one in Christ. And, and really, I think in Romans, he says the same thing a number of times in different ways because it was hard for many to understand that and what that was all about. In verse 28, I think Paul makes a very clear point, a point of distinction, distinction when he said, um, man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. An interesting point, I, and I'm turning this back to you. Man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. What is that? What, is it, what does he mean? What, what, is that, what is that about? We can't earn salvation. We can't, earn salvation. We can't you know, make enough to, to get our way there. You know, two means of justification are set against each other in, in the text. You have grace through faith or a system of works. Some were trying to stand right before God through a system of works. And Paul is making some emphasis here in the text, what we read and studied on Wednesday night and today, this idea of grace through faith. Grace through faith. And, and we can see the, the contrast with that. Wayne. Because he was a man looking for God, a man who prayed often, gave alms. You know, he was looking for truth. And when someone's looking for truth, God provides a way. And, and Cornelius is one of those very clear examples of that for sure. You know, the point understood, I'm sure, but I think it's what's being emphasized by Paul so much. We cannot live the law perfectly. Works are not enough. Hope is only found by the grace of God. And it requires faith to believe and to obey all that, that God has offered. Salvation by faith is available to all men. And that's part of the, the overarching view of what, what's being talked about, even right here in verses 29 through 31. Now, side point. What about faith only? I mean, you know, Paul is... He keeps, he keeps talking about faith, you know, salvation with faith. And what happens sometimes is some will go to this passage right here and start talking about, you know, faith only. See, we're, we're saved by faith only. Okay, so, you know, what we're, gonna, what we're going to see, this is a transition point as we get into chapter 4, where Paul is discussing here the faith of Abraham. And I think what we have to be asking ourselves and, and trying to understand, so Abraham was saved just by faith? I mean, he's going, 
Abraham was saved by faith and righteousness imputed to him. But what some are going to try to pull from this is that faith only. All you have to do is believe. But if we look at the text, is that what Paul is saying? I think this is an important point. This is, I, I, we really have to be able to see right here this, this point. Chapter 4, I think, helps us to see that. You know, what, when we look at Moses and, and what he did by faith and how he was imputed righteous, righteous by faith, I think there's a bigger picture here that we can see and, and gets clear. And you've got to remember grace, too. Sure. Well, many, you know, under the old law, right. many had faith to follow and right. obey God. And it wasn't just traditions. I mean, offering sacrifice, that wasn't a tradition. That was a command, you know, uh, yeah. by God, you know. Um, but, but something happened along the way. You know, Jesus dealt with a lot of Jews who knew the law and kept all the aspects of the law. But where was faith? I mean, something, something had gone off here. They were keeping the, keeping the law, but... Jesus was calling them hypocrites. So something had happened there. Maybe some of this comes out a little bit more here as we get into to chapter 4. And the first part of chapter 4, we'll spend a little bit of time, and then we'll be moving very quickly through the latter part of chapter 4 and, uh, and through most of chapter 5. It's interesting as we transition into chapter 4 here, and Moses, or I'm sorry, Abraham is introduced. We have to think about who Abraham was and how the Jews looked at him. I mean, he is one of the most mentioned and most revered names in the Bible, you know, among the Jews. It was Abraham that, to Abraham that God made some promises, remember, in, in Genesis chapter eight, or, uh, 12, you know, when, when that relationship began, began. And in chapter 15, there was more of a covenant we could say ratified, a covenant that came together in chapter uh, 15. And so to the Jews, you know, Abraham was like a hero. I mean, this is someone that was held up, you know, high in his esteem. And, and uh, the covenant made with Abraham would be referred to, you know, many times in, in Scripture. So he was a father figure. He was a historical figure. And, and uh, the Jews would quickly acknowledge our father Abraham or would, would be proud to be of his lineage. You know, so this, this meant something to them. And, uh, and, and they would say that they, they love Abraham. This was bragging rights. I mean, to be a Jew and to see lineage through Abraham, that was bragging rights. It was as though being in Abraham's family kind of punched a ticket to heaven, you know, kind of, you know, made them have this special relationship with God just because they had lineage through Abraham. And we can see the problem with that attitude. We've talked about those things before. You know, we, we see the problem with that. 
Now, the little side note that goes with that, I would just say, I, I, it, it kind of concerns me sometime when, uh, when we say, well, the Jews, they had, they had took those bragging rights too far, you know, and, and, and they were saying some things they shouldn't have said, and it kind of concerns me when, when I hear Christians say, well, my, Christians were parent, or my, my parents were Christians, you know, or I was raised in the church, you know, as though that's our bragging rights. And maybe we have to be careful about that too, right? You know, just a little bit different thing. And so the Jewish Christians would have known well, you know, the promises that God made to Abraham and that lineage there. It was circumcision. That was a sign of their relationship. And <clears throat> they considered that so important. Some were even expecting Gentiles who come to Christ to be circumcised, you know, because, I mean, to, to, to be like us, to be like a Jew, you have to be circumcised. Well, the point was here, you're not trying to be like a Jew. We're trying to be like disciples of Christ. But see, that, that was a serious issue uh, dealt with here in chapter 4 and dealt with some of the epistles that Paul writes. You know, that's because that's where those Jews were coming from. And I think it has something to do with what he says here in, in chapter 4. So, you know, the, as the Jews were very keen on remembering the works of the law, in chapter 4, Paul's discussion is on Abraham's faith. You know, it's interesting, Paul is not taking the Jews back to, you know, remember the works of the law. He's trying to help them understand Abraham's faith. The Jews were so very focused and centered on works of the law, it's almost as though faith was just something that's over here in the side. But Paul is going to be making the point in Romans 4 is that it is Abraham's faith that put him in a relationship with God. And I really hope we will see that the place of faith in the relationship of Abraham with God. There's, a, there's an incredible amount of emphasis that's put on this, and that's why we're slowing down and talking about this right here. A tremendous amount of emphasis on Abraham's faith. And I think Paul is trying to, to help those Jews understand this. Like everybody talks about their lineage in Abraham and and the benefits of being a Jew, and they would talk of Abraham like, you know, doing the works of, of the law. Well, the law wasn't even established yet with Abraham. And yet there was law. That is what God wanted Abraham to do, and it was by faith that Abraham responded and righteousness imputed to him. Are we getting that? Is that, is that kind of resonating just a little bit right there? We haven't even read anything from the chapter yet. This is just the preface to that, yeah. of, of what we need to think about and what we need to see. Abraham followed God completely. Hmm. His faith was so great. But you know, the Jewish people, they followed love the law by men. See the contrast of... of the men that, you know, they listen to, the Jewish people listen to the, um, the men. Well, the, the, I, I we, we, we will get to a time where after the law is established, that the Jews followed the law that was delivered by Moses. That was the law that they followed. But they did, did, they, did, they, did they start incorporating their own traditions and ideas? Yes. Discussion for a different time. But, but. As we back up to, to Abraham, it's before Mo the law was established through Moses. And that's what we're looking at first. Faith was such an example. And that's the point that Paul is trying to make here and emphasize is, is the faith of Abraham. And, you know, a, a rhetorical statement or question, you know, Abraham justified by works or faith. How do you think Jews would have responded to that? Yes, you say? I don't think they would have said yes. I think they would have said by works is how I think the Jews would have responded to that. And I think Paul is trying to make the emphasis that faith, you know, 
faith. Now, here again, some would try to start making some arguments about faith only. Read through chapter 4, and we see it's not faith only. Arguments about saved by faith only fall apart in Romans chapter 4. You know, and, and that's what we have to see. Okay, we're, we're trying to look big picture on, on some of this. Let's look at <clears throat> and read some from, from chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What, shall, what then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something of which to boast, but not before God. For what does Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Let's stop there. You know, if you read only verses 1 through 5, it might sound as though man has nothing to do since God has given a reward by grace. Chapter 3, last part, by God's grace. You know, and, and some could even go here and start making an argument of grace only. We have to read a little farther. There's more to that story. Or faith only. We, we talked about just a few moments ago. But the real point of the context here, what's said before and what after, is that man cannot be justified by the law. That is the point of emphasis Paul is making. But that it is, it is God's grace that gives us a means to approach him in faith. That's the bigger picture. Hope is offered because of God's grace. You know, sometimes we talk about God's grace and, and we, we look at that and we view that as a New Testament blessing. I've heard Christians say sometime, you know, in the Old Testament we read about works, in the New Testament we read, we read about grace. Grace is all about Christ. Well, yeah, there's grace offered through Christ, but let's understand something. Grace is a Bible issue. It's not a New Testament issue. God offered grace in the Old Testament, just as he offers grace in the New Testament. And, and I want us to see that bigger picture. Abraham, explain this. I want you to think about this and, and respond. Abraham, explain the role of works in his relationship to God. Abraham, explain the role of works in his relationship to God. Okay. Obedience. It is, it is obedience. You know, we, we see that, you know, it's so very real in, in the life of Abraham. And that's what Paul is wanting these Jewish Christians for sure to, to understand. Okay, so what about this point? Um, here, it, it, it's uh, from Genesis chapter 15 in, in verse 3. Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. What does that mean? I mean it was counted to him for righteousness. What, what? That's a little tricky, isn't it? Counted. Did, does, do you have a version that says something besides that it was counted to him for righteousness? Considered, considered to, for him. Reckoned. Reckoned, reckoned right, or, or imputed, you know, is, is something like that that's, that's, that's used. Um, still, what does that mean? It's an accounting term, really. Some, something that is added to your account. Something that is added to your uh, account. You know, uh, by faith, man is credited with the benefits of the death of Christ as a gift. Is, is kind of the, the, the bigger picture here. Um, did Abraham receive something he deserved? I don't get that impression. 
he was given, he was granted something. Something was added to his account uh, by God. Um, when we think about imputed righteousness, as we talked about in, in chapter 3, uh, the blessings that come in Christ, is that something that we deserve? No. We, we talked about that. Is it something that we can earn? No. It, it, it's not even possible. Um, if we work all week and on Friday the boss comes to us and says, I've got a gift for you and hands us our paycheck, how would you respond to that? And I know what my response would be. It's like, um, you haven't given me anything. I have earned. I had that discussion one time, in fact. I've earned that paycheck. That's not our relationship with Christ or through Christ to God. We can't earn salvation. It's a gift of God. Same thing with Abraham. It was imputed to him as righteousness. Uh, of Abraham, if we talk about works, was Abraham perfect? No? Just shaking your head lets me know that you're still with me. Was Abraham perfect? No. No. Uh, he was not without sin. If he, had, if he was perfect, then he would have something of which to boast. For if Abraham was justified by works, verse 2, he has something of which to boast, but not before God. He doesn't have anything to boast of. If Abraham was perfect, then he could boast and he could say, well, that righteousness you're talking about, I worked real hard for that. I earned that. No, no, can't, can't say that. And, and of Abraham, um, uh, faith? Well, yeah, there's something here being said about faith. Faith was the basis of the covenant relationship between God and Abraham. Faith was the basis of that. God expressed his will. Abraham believed that and obeyed that, did as God said. And, and, and think of what this should have said to Israel, to, to the Jews. That there was more than just being born into a particular family or lineage to have a relationship with God. The point that Paul is trying to make is, is that of a uh, um, obedient faith of Abraham. That's the standout point. That's the standout point of what has to come from this. Honey. I like the phrase... Okay, yeah. And that's what James 2 says. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works his faith was made perfect, and the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God and was imputed to him for righteousness, and he was a call of friend of God. There you go. I like that. Yes. Right, right. He's going to start the chapter with, with uh, uh, Abraham and his faith, building a relationship with God. He's going to end the chapter with that. Sure. It, And this becomes the key point, too, in the verses that, that follow. Let's just talk about that for just a moment as our time comes to a conclusion. Abraham was before the law of Moses. And so for those who are trying to hold on to the law, that we have to keep and, and do these works of the law to have a relationship with God, what Paul is basically going to say here in a moment is, what about Abraham? Yeah. It was before the law, you know, and the point of emphasis again becomes, look at Abraham's faith. Look at Abraham's faith. That, that is what drove him to, to serve and to obey God and for there to be a relationship and God imputed, to, imputed that to him as righteousness. 
That's the emphasis. So what I hope to do on Wednesday night is get the rest of the way through chapter 4. And you're thinking, well, how can we do that? We only did five verses today. I know. We spent a lot of time right here in this first part of chapter 4 to kind of set some things in place. And sometimes for us just to see the bigger picture and understand that Paul is, is really stressing here the faith of Abraham to some people who were just solely looking at works of obedience. Paul's talking about faith. And that's where it goes in the rest of the chapter. We won't spend as much time going through the rest of the chapters we did in these first few verses. So if you look at your outline, there's a few questions there to kind of prompt your thinking a little bit. But I'd like us to get through chapter 4 on Wednesday night, finish that up. And chapter 5, I think also, I think will be a chapter that we move through a little more quickly than, than what we have on this last two lessons here. We've really slowed down to try to put some things in place. And I hope we're getting just, I hope we're just getting the big picture of some things right now. And, and that, that's where we have to, that's how we're going to have to view Romans here as we're going forward. Our time's gone. We're just going to stop right here tonight. Finish chapter 4. Start looking at chapter 5.